At Highland Hill Farm, we believe many different things about work. One thing we all can agree on is that newly transplanted trees should be watered appropriately so they can go through the transplant shock and grow out to be healthy, nice looking trees in your landscape. We agree on that roots of the tree is the most important thing to water. And our drip system waters the tree directly at the roots, not on the foliage. You can see here, around the little weeds we have, that we have a drip line that goes into each tree and waters the tree roots of the plant. And that helps the roots pick up water and gets the, lets the system of the plant work as it should work in nature. Every now and then it's okay to water the foliage, like overhead irrigation is okay in certain instances. However, if you constantly water the tree's foliage every day for a couple of hours, it's most likely not very good. The reason it's not very good is if you have any minerals in your water and you're constantly putting water on your foliage, those, those minerals can deposit and build up over time on the leaves. Our area, we have very heavy calcium in our water. So if we constantly put water on the foliage, that calcium builds up into a white sheet and it doesn't look as nice. Box photosynthesis and with all the water on the foliage may also encourage funguses to grow on the foliage. That's why we tend to like to have our water delivered to the root systems of the tree rather than onto the leaves of the tree. Now, next question is, how long should you water for a tree? It's a very difficult question for anyone to answer because each location you plant the tree at will determine how much water you need. A good example is if you go to South Jersey and you plant in the sands, you're going to need more water than if you go around to northern Pennsylvania where we have heavy clay, you'll need less water. It all depends on the soil that you have, how it drains from it, and the type of plant that you have. Whether it be a potted plant versus ball burlap plant, when the ball burlap plant was dug, how long it's been out of the ground, has it started to grow new roots. It also depends on the weather of the year. How long you should word determines, it's depending on how much rain you had, how hot the area is, how much wind goes through, is it full sun, is it shaded? All those factors affect the amount of water that a plant needs to survive in an area. The best thing to do is to go out and see if the plant is moist or not. If it's moist, the plant has the water available to it to uptake the water to for its needs. If it's too wet, the, there's too much water around, it blocks oxygen flow to the roots, and if there's not oxygen flow to the roots, the roots start to suffocate and they die. That's what I call root rot. Root rot. If there's not enough water, the roots can't pick up enough water to support all the foliage on the tree, the tree stops growing and starts shedding leaves and that's not what a good looking plant in the landscape should look like. A good looking plant should get enough water that it needs to keep all its foliage and put on some new growth on it. However, not saying that, there is some exceptions to that. Some plants such as maples and birches go through summer adjustment sheds and those are healthy processes that those plants do naturally. So if you go and you get a birch tree, you put it into the ground, and in the middle of summer it starts losing leaves, and it's like a stray species, or maybe like a heritage birch, and it starts doing that, it's not something to be worrisome of because that's what they do. So watering is very important. You want the plant to continue to grow. You want it to continue to keep the foliage, but also you know, allow the plant to do what it's going to do naturally. Okay, now one question, Mike. Should a person, if they're going to go away for a month or, or for an extended period of time, should they put, it, put their trees on a timer? And if so, what would you suggest about timers on trees? Well, if you have no one to give it water, the timer is the way to go because they do need water. I'm not particularly a fan of timers. I do use timers on my greenhouse, but timers in the landscape after the tree is planted, I guess I shrug it off a little bit, try to get some, try to get one of your friends to do it or family to do it. Mostly because if you overwater the area, it's easier to overwater a plant in the ground than it is to overwater a plant out of the ground. And if you overwater the plant in the ground and you just planted it, sometimes the water stays around the tree much longer at a newly planted plant than a plant that's been in the ground for a long time. And if the water stays around the plant for longer, or you get too much water around a plant that's newly planted, 
the roots that are trying to grow out to compensate for being dug are smothered in the water and they can't breathe and they usually don't do as well if it's over water. I would say uh, if you water it and you use a timer, you can use a timer, but I would say water it on the lighter end with the timer and then constantly go out and check the plant, make sure that it's getting enough water so that you can add water to the situation, but once you have too much water there, it's very hard to take the water away. Right. A timer, two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon, what would you say about that? Yeah, we had someone that said that. That might be a little bit too much, especially for most of the soils in the United States. I prefer to have it maybe like once a day so that it gets wet and it gets a chance to dry out and get air into the, the soil. And the two hours depends on the system that you're using, but our system, we typically don't recommend people running it for two hours. That puts out just a little bit too much water in my opinion. But however, it is your landscape, it's your soil, it's your location. And if you seem to think that that's the amount of water you should do. It could possibly be, be possible if you have a sandy soil. Yeah, you have to leave room for every, all the different scenarios. The scenarios. Okay, well thank you very much Mike. And if you have any questions with your irrigation on your freshly planted nursery stock, this is Michael Hurst at Highland Hill Farm, and he will answer your question. Hit yeah, his, that's my voice. And <laughs> what is your number for people to call you? My number is 267-446-2376. Okay, thank you very much, Mike. If you have questions about trees and shrubs, give us a call at Highland Hill Farm at 215-651-8329 or email us at bill at highlandhillfarm.com. If you like this video, I hope you subscribe, and please go to the subscribe button and subscribe to our videos. Thank you. Have a nice one. Bye-bye. This is in one leaf of a bald cypress. This is one leaf of dawn redwood. As you can try to see, the leaflet, which is these little green guys going either side, is just one part of the leaf. And all those leaflets connect to a midrib, which comes down and ends right where it goes into the, the stem at. If you look at the leaflets, they are arranged alternate of each other. On the Dawn Redwood, it has the same leaflet onto the midrib going down, but they're arranged opposite of each other. If you ever see a plant and you're not quite sure whether it's bald cypress or Dawn Redwood, take a look at the leaflets and how they're arranged. If they are opposite of one another, they must be Dawn Redwood. If they alternate back and forth, it must be bald cypress.